You're going to take a look at something called the cardiac cycle. Now, if you've studied the heart already, you'll know the names of the different chambers, the atria, the ventricles, the idea that there's two types of circulation. You'll be able to draw a diagram that looks something like this already with the thick walls, the left ventricle. You'll be able to draw the circulation coming out here and then all the way around to the lungs then back around. This is just a simple diagram form. You'll be able to name the valves. So you'll know that these are called atrioventricular valves because they're valves that are separating the atria and the ventricles. And then these valves are semilunar valves. This is just to help you understand the flow. It's not what the actual heart looks like. Um, if you go to YouTube or actually go to Google or go to any browser and type in heart contraction SWF, this is a shortcut for a type of animation, uh, you're going to be able to see uh, the heart actually beating and this will make a lot more sense to you. The diagram that I'm pulling up right here is going to look very complex. Um, here's a constant reminder, focus on the pressure. And then while I'm trying to explain what's going on here, I'm going to be constantly referring back to the diagram. So you should have everything in front of you, um, all your notes about the heart in front of you while you're studying this. So you can see, try to see the big picture of how everything's working uh, together here. So a couple things, focus on the pressure here. This is showing the pressure changes in the aorta, in the ventricles and in the atrium. In the atria and notice how the atria the atrial pressures are very low relatively low compared to the other pressures even when there's contraction happening which we'll see in a little bit but the pressures in the atria are very low compared to the maximum pressures that can be reached in the ventricles and in the aorta remember that the aorta is going to be the first tube uh, where blood comes out from after it leaves this left ventricle with the highly oxygenated blood. So we expect a lot of high pressures there in the ventricles and also in the left ventricle and also in the aorta where the blood just leaves the left ventricle. So here we go. Um, we're looking at stage number one. So we've got some labels here. Stage number one, this is when the atria are contracting. So if you imagine these top two squares being squeezed, the blood is coming down into here. So obviously the atrial ventricular valves are open to allow that to allow the ventricles to fill. And then during this time, uh, you can see the pressures are relatively low, even in the ventricles and also in the atria. As this thing is beginning filled up, low pressure to allow the blood to actually come in here. So nothing much interesting, uh, nothing really interesting is happening during what we designate as stage one here. It just means the ventricles are getting filled. Stage two is when things get really exciting. And so you can see stage two, um, get my arrows to show up here. Where are my arrows? There they are. So in stage two, notice what's happening. The ventricles are contracting. And then when the ventricles are contracting, the blood is coming out the semilunar valves, the atrial ventricular valves are going to be closed. So that's designated here. The atrial ventricular valves are going to be closed. Semilunar valves are open. Blood is pumped to the arteries. And then at the same time, the atria are going to actually refill. But the key thing to notice during stage two here is when these things are contracting, notice how high the pressure jumps up to both in the ventricles and in the aorta, because as this thing is squeezing and I'm holding my fingers in front of my screen trying to show you this, but you can't see it. But if you imagine my fingers are hovering around this area here, squeezing these two ventricles in, the pressure inside gets really high. And then obviously in the aorta where the blood is getting squeezed out like this, the pressure is going to be really high here as well too. And so that's why you see a big pressure increase going on right there. Okay, afterwards, uh, stage number three, which is designated by these little arrows here, the ventricles are stopped contracting, they've stopped contracting, the pressure is going to fall, the semilunar valves are going to close, the atrial ventricular valves are going to open, and then the ventricles are getting filled again, and then the entire process is repeating. So once again, focus on the pressures of what's happening here. Don't try to memorize this as a diagram, but think logically. When the ventricles are contracting, what is actually happening? Where is the high pressure? Which valves are open? Which valves are closed? And you can kind of reason it out. And that's a better approach to seeing the big picture than trying to memorize all of these events as uh, distinct separate events. These stages are just arbitrary stages that we've given value to, but really all of this was happening long before we were able to figure out what was actually going on. So think of the big picture. And remember, keep in mind, uh, sorry, the font looks kind of fat here, but it says notice how low the atrial pressures are 
uh, relative to the ventricular and aorta pressures at their max. And so that's going to help you understand that um, a little bit. Okay, hopefully that made some sense. Rewatch that, go back through, study it, look at your other notes, and then you'll be able to take a look and hopefully understand the events that are going on in the cardiac cycle. Seeing an animation, again, about how the heart is actually pumping, which I can't do unless I do a little play for you, which I don't have time to do. But check out the animations that are available on online. There's just so many out there, and it'll make a lot of this make sense. And they'll even show graphs plotting how the pressures are changing while you're seeing the heart contracting. Very neat stuff. So one more thing that links up to one of the previous videos we talked about was uh, the idea that the heart can beat on its own. And it does this through a region of specialized muscle cells called the sinoatrial node, or you can just write SA node. You don't have to write out sinoatrial. You can just put SA node, and most people will understand what that is. It acts as the pacemaker. This allows the heart to beat on its own without any external hookups that are telling it you need to beat. Um, it can be the rate of contraction can actually mod be modified by other things such as nerve impulses and from hormones, as, as we'll see in a little bit right here. But um, yeah, the location of that pacemaker, you need to know that is in the right atrium. So it's in the right atrial wall right here. So if you were to carve this SA node out of the heart, then it wouldn't be able to actually beat. So the pacemaker is actually there. So you may, have heard, you may have heard of artificial pacemakers. Artificial pacemakers are basically just things that are put into somebody's body to help their beat, to help their, not their beat, to help their heart regulate the actual beat, kind of enhancing the function of the existing pacemaker in the wall of the right atrium. The SA node sends electrical signals to stimulate contraction, starting in the atria and then to the ventricles. Remember, these two chambers are going to contract and then these two chambers contract, and then that's where you get the, uh, the heartbeat. The sound of the heartbeat, the boom boom that you actually hear, is from the sound of the valves actually slamming shut. You get the atrial ventricular valve slamming shut, and then the semilunar valve slamming shut, and that's the sound that the doctor is listening for to see if you have regular heart rhythm, basically. Two nerves from the medulla in the brain can bring impulses to increase or decrease the heart rate. So obviously you know that your heart rate can increase or decrease. And now with my fancy Apple Watch, uh, whenever I'm bored, I can look down at my wrist to find out if my heart rate is going fast or slow. Or I could just put two fingers on my wrist and count. Doesn't matter. I like the technology. Another thing is obviously epinephrine, which is... Uh, also known as adrenaline, and that is secreted by the adrenal glands, not the thyroid. I saw that in a question recently. Uh, by the adrenal glands, and obviously uh, adrenaline or epinephrine can increase your heart rate. That contributes to the fight or flight response when you learn about neurobiology or the nervous system. Uh, fight or flight. And for me, the choice is usually flight. <laughs> 